Good morning anglers, Lisa here again with the IGFA. Thank you for joining us on another fishing adventure and today is a great adventure because we are joining the IGFA's fishing summer camp on the reward fishing fleet. So we're here in Miami, we're going to go do some fishing out in the Atlantic Ocean on this charter boat fishing trip. We're going to have a great time, so stay tuned and let's get fishing. The Reward Fleet is based out of the Bayside Mall in downtown Miami. We leave the Miami high rises behind us as we leave the dock and head out to the Atlantic Ocean through Government Cut. This is the major charter boat field trip we take every Friday during summer camp, which is why the IGFA campers are very excited. Today we are joining the camp, so let's meet the staff and volunteers who have trained these campers on basic fishing techniques and ethical angling practices all week long. We have Joanna, who is the lead of the camp, camp counselors Savannah and Anthony, Hayden and Adrian, two of our dedicated volunteers. And today we have Captain Wayne. The Reward Fleet has been fishing these waters for more than 50 years. And as we head out of the inlet, it can get choppy, so hold on tight, campers! While the boat heads to our destination, counselors and volunteers are busy rigging the rods. The IGFA is a catch and release camp, so one thing we do is crimp down the barbs for quicker and safer releases. Today, campers will be using a size 2-aught circle hook with 20 pound leader attached to a swivel and either a half ounce or a one ounce egg weight. If there is a stronger current, campers will use a heavier egg weight. The main knot we use for these charter boat trips is the uni knot. To tie the uni knot, bring the tag end around forming a loop. Then take the tag end and wrap it around the two lines inside the loop about five to seven times more for lighter or thinner line, like your lead line, and less for heavier or thicker line, like your leader. Take the tag end and pull. Then take the main line and pull. Don't forget to cut the tag ends. You can attach the hook to the hook keeper. Many rods have one near the reel. However, this may not be the safest place to store the hook because many anglers grab the rod right at the reel. Another place you can attach the hook is the bridge. This is the connection between the eye or guide and the rod. You do not want to attach your hook in the eye or guide because the hook moves around and can scratch or make cuts in the insert. And this can cause your line to break when you have a fish on. Always make sure your equipment is maintained, protected, and ready to go. Now that all the rods are set up, it's time to prepare the bait. Today's bait, squid. But we aren't going to use this large of a chunk. So the mate cuts the squid into strips and then into smaller chunks suitable for a 2 aught hook and for the type of fish that we're targeting today. Now let's learn from one of our campers as to how to put on this squid. So first, whatever side you are, grab it, and then hook it once. Just once? Hook it once. Hook it once. It's not going through. Oh, I got it. Pull up, pull up. And then grab the sister hook. Pull up. Take it to the end. Okay. And then pull it through again. And you're done. Can you hold it up and show me? 
Yeah, I got a squirrel. Oh. That's what you look like. Here, hold it up a little closer to your Hi, face. Look, your face, your face. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. Thank that you for showing me that. Tough. Okay, we stopped at our first stop here. We are out here in the Atlantic Ocean. The campers are already fishing. The seas are about two to three feet. So we're going to see how we do here in the first spot. But let's see if we can catch some fish. Bait's on, lines in the water, let's go. Seas of two to three feet should be fairly calm if the interval between the wavelengths is long. However, today the interval was very short, meaning it was choppier. You can see this as the boat goes up and down, up and down. Big old pork chops. One more, one more, one more. All right, all right. Okay, by the way, the first fish you caught was also a white grunt. This is also a white grunt. Let me see this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On these boat trips, we catch quite a few species of grunts, which are common reef fish of the tropical western Atlantic. Today, we caught mostly white grunts that are bluish, silver in color, with stripes on their head only. This is not to be confused with the sailor's choice that a few campers caught as well. This fish has black spots on its scales. Lastly, we did catch one or two blue striped grunts, this is different than the others as it has more of a yellow body with blue stripes going down its entire body. It also has a dark tail and rear dorsal fin. In Florida, there are no specific regulations for grunts as they are considered unregulated. The only regulation would be that an angler cannot keep more than 100 pounds in one day. But they are a great fish for catch and release fishing and to practice how to use a de-hooking tool. When using a de-hooking tool, slide it onto the hook and keep the tension by pulling your hands apart. Keep the de-hooking tool and fishing line straight and just rotate your arms until the fish slides off. It will slide off easier if you crimp the barb on the hook. One of the reasons to use a dehooking tool is to protect yourself from fish with teeth, like these groupers. Check out those teeth! In Florida, one might hear a captain or two calling a red-colored grouper a strawberry grouper. This is not correct because there are several groupers that are strawberry red in color, but they have different fishing regulations, as they are different species. This includes the red grouper a reddish grouper but may have pale to dark bars going down its body and white spots. The yellowfin grouper has the outer third of its pectoral fin that is pale or yellow, and it has rounded rectangular body blotches. The red hind has its tail and rear fins black with a white outline. The coney has small spots on its body, but no black on its tail or rear fins. And then the most common grouper we catch on these boat trips the Graysby grouper. It has three to five dark black spots along the base of its dorsal fin and it also has a rounded tail. 
For the Red Hind, Graysby, and Coney groupers, they do not have a minimum size, but do have a close season on the Atlantic side of Florida from January 1st to April 30th. We were fishing in June, so we were not in the close season and could have kept those Graysby groupers. However, if we were to catch the same size red grouper or yellowfin grouper on the same day, those would have had to been released because these two groupers have a minimum size limit of 20 inches. Now you will not find a strawberry grouper in the fishing regulations of Florida. This is why it's extremely important to learn their accepted common name for their fishing regulations. Back to our trip. We are switching spots so the campers have to reel up. However, if you ever get stuck on the bottom, do not lift up and bend the rod. This can cause your tip to break. Instead, keep the rod straight, put your hand on the drag, and pull. You may have to reel back down to pull again, but it's best to keep that rod straight. Try your best to get yourself unstuck, but in the case your rig breaks off, just re-rig which it's not always the easiest thing to do on a moving boat. Last thing, make sure all line, including the tag ends, gets stored and then recycled. We are now in our second spot. We did move back into the bay because the ocean was getting a little too choppy out there. So we moved back into the bay where it's a little more protected, but there's still fish out here. We're still catching fish. Look at this, look at this. White grunt right there, white grunt. All right, let's keep fishing. Biscayne Bay is a large estuary and an extremely important ecosystem housing seagrass, coral reef, mangrove forest, and sandy bottom habitats. It is a vital source of environmental education and recreation, supporting and nurturing an enormous variety of wildlife. It is also the location of the Port of Miami, one of the largest passenger and commercial ports in the world. Here in the bay, we are only 20 feet in depth, so campers let out their line and then reel up three times to avoid getting stuck on the bottom. And there's still fish here, so fish on.
fish, I, I caught a fish, but it got off. And that fish gave me the best fight of my life. Best fight of your life? It was like, I, I had, to, had to have two people bring it off. Call it. And he came off, though? He came off. All right, get him again. He's still out there. Get him again. Snapper. Um, wait a second, Miss Lisa. Take a closer look. That is not a lane snapper. That's a juvenile mutton snapper. Snappers are another family of fish you want to make sure you identify properly. The lane snapper has several yellow lateral stripes like the lanes on a road and a black blotch on its body. The mutton snapper does not have these yellow stripes but does have a black spot on its body and a pointed anal fin. The gray or mangrove snapper can be pale to dark brown with a dark band that runs from its lip across the eye. This is similar to the schoolmaster, but this fish has yellow fins like a yellow school bus. Another fish with a yellow tail fin is the yellowtail snapper. This one is very hard to misidentify. We did catch each of these snapper species on the boat trip except for the lane snapper, which Miss Lisa did misidentify at first. This fish was actually a juvenile mutton snapper. This is important because lane snappers only have a minimum size of 8 inches, whereas mutton snappers have a minimum size of 18 inches. Mistakes happen, but when in doubt, always release. Well, thank you campers for a great day of fishing, and thank you all for joining us on this adventure. A special thanks to the Reward Fleet, and... Thank you, Thank you guys so much, thank you guys. All right, good day, good day of fishing. That's a wrap. Good.